Seesaw just came out with three new features that open up so many opportunities for educators. This video is going to preview each feature and give a few ideas for use. We're going to look at adding hyperlinks, adding videos, and recording across pages. First, we'll look at adding hyperlinks. Before this feature was available, teachers would provide hyperlinks of videos and different resources within the instructions. It was a great workaround. Students could click the video and then come back to the activity to complete it. Now, however, that video can be hyperlinked directly within the activity. This is a remote learning example. You'll see in the instructions there are a lot of choice boards, a lot of places for students to go, and even a um, kind of schedule for the week. This was a really great um, activity put together by a fellow Seesaw ambassador, but I want to see that now you can actually provide these links within the activity for students. In fact, this teacher created a really awesome handwriting video for students that we can now put within the activity. I've recreated this handwriting activity to show the new hyperlink feature. Whenever students go to add response, notice now the video is right here for students to watch. If they need help, they can simply click on the link, watch the video, and then toggle back to their Seesaw activity to complete their handwriting. Not only can you hyperlink images or text or shapes, but you can also hyperlink to different pages. This can be really awesome as you guide th students through multiple page activities. Note here, this is just an image that was snipped and put onto the activity, and it's going to take students to page two. While they can still toggle over here on their pages, this may just make it a little bit easier to know where to go, or especially if they needed to go out of order. Another awesome opportunity for hyperlinking is to create some choice boards. So maybe here, after they finish their page one, they would have the choice. They can practice their snap words, or we could add in a choice number two here. So this actually just goes to a Google slide to help students with their choice words. Maybe you want to have them reflect over their learning for the day or their unit. They've always got the save draft feature. And then when they're finished, you can see I've provided a little arrow here. If you're going to um, be using arrows to link students to different pages, it may be good to provide one that shows to click the green check when they're finished so they know they're at the end of the activity. We're going to take a quick look at what this looks like for the teacher when creating the activity. Here's that handwriting activity that we were just looking at. When I go ahead and go into the template, you can see I've created the video here. In order to get the video here, I actually just took a snip of the video thumbnail. The reason for this is that I want students to know what they're clicking. So um, I just used Greenshot in order to take a screenshot. You can use your favorite screenshot tool here. And then I'm gonna go back to Seesaw. I'm gonna click on the camera, and then I'm gonna go to Upload to find my image. I can move the image anywhere I want to on the screen, and note this can be any image that you um, want to add here. I'm going to click on the three dots, and then I'm going to choose a link. Note here, I can paste in the website or URL, or I could link to a different page, which we'll look at in a second. And now my video is hyperlinked for students to see. In order to hyperlink to a different page, we'll go ahead and show that by hyperlinking a shape. So maybe I want to use an arrow to note that students are going to move on to the next page. This could be really great, especially for younger learners. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this arrow white. You can change colors. You can widen it out. But for younger learners, it might be good for them just to get used to clicking the arrows to um, guide them through the activity. So all I'm going to do is click the three dots, and then I'm going to link, and I'm going to link to page two. So you can link to any page after you've added pages over here. So. I can change this at any point by going to the three dots and link. I can unlink page two, and then I could go ahead and link to page three if I wanted to. Whenever I'm completely finished, I'm gonna click on the green check. And as always, I can go ahead and lock in anything that I want to so students can't move it on the screen, or I can delete if I don't need it. Okay, we'll preview these next ones a little bit quicker, but next we're gonna look at adding videos. The possibility to add a video has always been an option, but it's just a standalone video. You can't add videos within activities until the new feature was added. This is an ePortfolio reflection activity that I'm very excited about. One thing that's awesome is that students can showcase their work here. So that could be um, via link. So this in the instructions here, they can add a picture, a link, or a video. So students can actually add their own links to maybe a Google slide or something like that. But if you wanted them to add a video, they're simply gonna click on the camera and then choose the video option. Okay, and it would be showing the student here as they video. They're gonna go ahead and start the recording. 
click pause or um, they can keep recording if they need to. When they're finished, they will click on done. And you'll see that I can move this video freely around the page wherever I want to. Note that if I go back to create another video, it's going to give me the note that I can only do one per page unless I re-record. With that said, you could have multiple videos on multiple pages, which could be really awesome as students reflect or tell a story or just explain or justify their thinking. The video feature also means that teachers could create their own tutorial videos and put them directly in a Seesaw activity, maybe on page one, um, so students can watch the tutorial directly in the Seesaw activity. The last feature we're going to look at is recording across pages. We're going to go back to this same ePortfolio reflection activity. Note that students can use the record or the label tool to tell us about their work. So if we were going to use record, we're going to go ahead and click here, start recording, and we can talk a little bit about our work here. Whenever we're finished, we're going to click on pause, and then I can click on page two up here or click the link to go to page two. Notice that my recording is still paused right here. So this is actually a mystery reveal. I have to thank Chris Saginar for his excellent resource on mystery reveal. I've already revealed this one response, but I could reveal my question stem. And then I can go ahead and continue my recording on page two. I built on my knowledge of to learn. And so they would go ahead and use this stem to talk more about their work. When they're finished, they'll click on pause. And then when you're done with all the recording on your pages that you need to record on, you're gonna click on done. Okay, I want you to note that this was a two page activity, but now an additional page has been added as number one. This is actually a file of all of the recordings from your pages that is now on page one of the activity. And then I can go through and see my other pages. I'll click the check mark when finished. Recording across pages is really convenient for teachers because if there's a lot of pages, sometimes they have to click through to see everything um, on all the pages. But if they've recorded on all I the pages, and start the, the teacher could see it on the first page. This is just a preview of several ideas. I'm sure there are many more out there, and I cannot wait to see how the new C Seesaw features are utilized.